Hello and welcome to the Cold Coffee Club, a podcast brought to you by Houston Moms. We're here to give you a little bit of that mom-to-mom connection, fun, and conversation amidst all the chaos. Join us as we take a break from doing all the things and explore the wide spectrum of this crazy motherhood role. We'll interview fun guests, talk about cool grown-up topics, laugh, share, and grow together. So go ahead, reheat that coffee and put your feet up. Here we go. Hello and welcome to the Cold Coffee Club. Hello everyone, this is Jenny and welcome my co-host Ashley. Good morning everybody, welcome back. Hi, so we are happy to be with you again this morning. We have a really special guest, but first we want to talk a little bit. I want to touch base here with Ashley. We always like to start with a little bit of our little mom wins and fails this week. Do you have a win or a fail this week? What do you want to share? So I'll start with a fail. We'll start it. We'll start with the fail, <laughs> end with our win and positive. Um, randomly, uh, my kid asked me, where is my blue bear that we got from Build-A-Bear? And I have absolutely no idea where it is. Like, <laughs> I can't even begin to guess where it was. I, no clue. So I, I was like, I'll, I'll look. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure it's not here. It's I done. don't know. Yeah, yep. I'm pretty sure it's, it's gone. long gone. I'm or tempted to buy another find one. It, you're going to find it like up in like some weird shelves or, you know, you're going to find it when he's 15 is basically. Yes. It's yep. be. Like, Here it is. Surprise. <laughs> All right. What's but your win? My win is you mentioned a couple episodes ago, the tactic of, you know, talking to your kids and saying, well, as soon as you do this, we can do this. And I implemented that and it has been working like a charm. It is been yes. so like, it's been so helpful with the fights, especially morning time and bedtime. And I'm mm-hmm. like, as soon as you do this, we can move forward with our day. As soon as you do this, get right. your jammies on, brush your teeth. We can read four gives stories. An hour. It gives yes. An hour. yes. Oh, it has been so helpful. So Yay. thank you for sharing that. <laughs> well, my yours? win this week is a little bit of a hack and I've been doing this for a while, but I just want to share it here. Um, so I have my couch in my living room is from Ikea. It's not a very expensive couch. I think we bought it like seven or eight years ago. It costs like $400. Um, and there's a cover on it. It's a cover and my, the cover on the couch is like a beige color or it's a really light cream. And it, I have two kids and a dog and over time it gets stained um, you know, just with spills and just dirt and whatever, and you can wash it, but even with washing it, sometimes after a while, it just starts to go, you're like, this is unsalvageable. Yeah. Um, and so we've had it, I think now, like I said, seven or eight years mm-hmm. and every, I want to say two years, mm-hmm. we do this thing called, we just buy a new one <laughs> and it is $50 from Ikea. Yeah. yeah you buy a new one and you just, we wash it most of the time, but every once in a while we just go, we we're getting a new couch and by new couch, I mean a new slip cover yep. and you just put a new one on. Yeah. And so my win is like, stop making it harder. And we're just scrubbing and scrubbing. And this, this cushion looks nice, but this kitchen cushion looks really bad. <laughs> just, you know what? Just, just do it. So yep. <laughs> uh, just go to Ikea and buy a new slip cover. Yep. So every couple oh. years, we just are going to freshen up the living room. <laughs> That's perfect. And we're just buying a new slip cover. <laughs> we started doing that a while ago. Yep. We're just like, this one's unsafe. We can't save it anymore. Right. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. love how you're, you're making it simple. Just, yeah. just stop it, Jenny. Just, yeah, stop. just stop. Just stop. It's just, <laughs> just stop trying. Yep. <laughs> So, so today we are going to share an amazing conversation Jenny had with a uh, New York Times bestselling author and Houston native, uh, Melanie Shankle. Yay. And so Jenny and Melanie sit and chat about motherhood and um, Jenny's journey through motherhood, you know, at the very beginning. Melanie's she- journey through motherhood, not my journey. Yes, Melanie's journey. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, discussing, you know, Melanie and her husband chose to have one child and what that was like early on. And then now fast forward to, she has a daughter uh, who just finished her freshman year of college. So what that looks like. Um, so we're going to share that with y'all. 
Hey, Melanie. Hey, Jen. How are you? Good. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, yeah, I'm so happy to be here. Awesome. Okay. Well, I am so thankful that you're with us today and we want to talk to you about, you are a Texas girl, you're an Aggie yeah. yes, and I you've am. got some Houston roots, right? I know you're in San Antonio right I now, do. but like you're a Houston tried and true, right? Oh yeah. Born in Houston, born and raised in Houston. So we lived, um, I will just say we lived in the West Adore subdivision off of 1960. Yeah. Um, so that's where I was born. My parents lived in Bel Air when I was born. They moved out to 1960 and I lived in Houston until I was in seventh grade. And then um, my parents got divorced at that point. So my mom moved us to Beaumont, but my dad was always in Houston. And so he okay. is a Houston guy. And so Yay. I spent a lot of my life in Houston and I love it. And um, really kind of, I think always thought I would end up in Houston, but you know, you meet a boy in San Antonio and that's, that's where you end up. And hey, so gotta go where the road takes you. It is, but I really miss the restaurants in Houston. Hey, I don't, I don't blame you. That's, mm -hmm. I feel like sometimes that's like the main thing we've got going for us here. Oh, <laughs> it's the whole, I felt like when my parents, like when I, like even when Caroline was a newborn and my parents still lived in Houston, like we would plan our weekends, like I'm coming to visit and here are the places that I need to eat, you know, like just, I've got to check them off my list. There's nothing yes. better. <laughs> and I know you come back here a lot because you, or at least did for a while because your mm -hmm. daughter is a soccer player. And yes. And come here a lot for soccer games. So when you came, when yeah. you come here, where do you like to eat? Like what is your main, what's your restaurant? It's tough. Like? Soccer didn't really lend itself to getting to go eat the way I wanted to go eat. But yeah. one of the things we always, we love Kalina's, mm. um, that they have an artichoke that they do is an appetizer that is mm -hmm. like our favorite thing. So Kalina's is a favorite. There's a place called El Masson that's a Cuban restaurant that's in the Rice okay. Village okay. Um, because my dad lived, that's where he ended up living was in the Rice area. Um, and it's the best, I mean, like you can't just go anywhere and get Cuban food and it's right. so good. So those are probably my top two. Awesome. Yeah. Um, okay, so I first like became familiar with you years ago, you know, Houston moms used to be Houston moms blog. Mm -hmm. um, and we, all of our contributors are kind of bloggers in our own right, but that's kind of how you got your start before you became a New York times bestselling author. Yeah. Kind of originally we're just a blogger kind of sharing your stories as being a mom. Kind yeah. of talk about that kind of how long have you been blogging? Do you still blog? Kind of tell me your journey with that. Okay. So I started a blog back in July, 2006. I did not know. I mean, I'm somebody who came of age when we didn't have the internet. Like I still remember like my husband Perry and I in 1997 getting our first giant desktop computer and connecting to AOL like, and then we got on and we're like, what do we, so what do we do with it? Like now we're online, but what do we do? So that's, you know, I'm a dinosaur from that standpoint. But when I was on maternity leave with Caroline, she was born in 2003. I discovered mommy blogs. And I was like, oh, this is a thing. Like I didn't even know and I loved them. And then I always loved to write. And so, you know, I just read blogs for several years. And then when Caroline was just about to turn three, which was July, 2006, I was like, I'm going to start a blog. I was like, at the time I was full-time pharmaceutical sales, okay. um, but I really wanted a creative outlet. Um, and you know, at that age, kids are doing all this funny stuff and they're just, it's like every day. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to scrapbook this deal. And so I'm going to, write this blog and never okay. dreamed that it would be anything. But I mean, I blogged, it's hard to believe now when I look back, but I blogged Monday through Friday every day for probably 10 years. Like, I don't oh think gosh. I, I think it was 2016 before I stopped. And, um, and now I do, I'll put fashion Friday. I do a fashion Friday thing right. that I put up on Fridays. Um, I put the podcast show notes on the blog, but I don't write the blog anymore because, okay. you know, when I started, Instagram didn't exist and Twitter right. didn't exist. And so now it's like, there's these other outlets that, you Wasted. know, everybody shifted to. I mean, no, I don't think anybody blogs anymore. Not the way, not the way we used to, mm -mm, least, no. like, you know, not these kind of personal things. And you're right. Yeah. I mean, I started kind of around that time too. I think I started my, um, I started a blog back then just about my life. I had just gotten married in 2006 mm -hmm. and I was writing about that because again, like, I don't even think people didn't post things on Facebook. Facebook was these one liner status yeah. updates. Oh, yeah. like, it made you write, like, um, it would give you like Jenny is. Yeah. You had to like give it was awful sentence structure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just so mm -hmm. funny. Like, you couldn't, I don't know. Yeah. 
No, yeah. I've gone back and looked because there's that meme going around about nobody is less me than my Facebook statuses in 2008. And some of mine are like, Melanie is, and it's like thinking about eating cheese enchiladas tonight. Yeah. And I'm like, why? <laughs> why did I? Why did? Why did I share that? What was? What was that? Nobody cares. <laughs> nobody so. cares. Or it's like, is is driving to work? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. Um, well, and so you do, you have a daughter, Caroline, um, I do. and so she is your only child. Yes, she is. Okay. And so how old is she now? She is 18, oh my God. believe it or not. She is okay. a freshman at Texas A&M and she is 18 years old and I just can't even believe it. But yeah, so she's, she's grown and grown and flown. Oh my goodness. And how has I that know. been transitioning her out of the home? You know, has that been yeah. bittersweet or... <laughs> It, in some ways it's been bittersweet in a lot of ways. I feel like it's been better than I expected. You know, okay. like, I think you dread it. Cause I think it's, it's all about the stage of parenting you're in. Cause I think like you look at yourself with your kids right now and you're like, Oh my gosh, like when they leave, it's going to be devastating, mm -hmm. but it's like, you see how everything prepares you and how they get ready. You know what I mean? Like you just, by the time, cause it's like they turn 16, they get their driver's license. You're like, I don't see you anymore anyway. You know, <laughs> like you're, you're already gone. Um, and then you just see all the ways that you're like, they're ready to go. Like, you know, if we've done our job the way we're supposed to, we've equipped them and they're ready to move on to the next step. So it's like, I miss her, but at the same time, it's like, I was just telling you before we started recording, like you think like, oh my gosh, I'm done. And then you're like, oh no, oh no, I'm still parenting every inch of that. And it's because it's a phone call now and it's going to be some frantic text about, I don't know how to get my parking pass, but you're still, <laughs> they still need still to, in it. they do it's just not like in your house, you know, yeah. Like yeah. In the and it's just, I'm sure a different kind of parenting rather than, you know, I'm helping my kid with, you know, a laundry issue. It, yes. Know, I, my button won't work or whatever. You, you're doing something very different. Yeah. It's that. different, but it's fun. I mean, like yeah. I have to say, and I went to A&M, so I mean, maybe I'm biased, but like to me, like I love, oh my gosh, like I love going up to College Station. I love mm -hmm. seeing her there. I love seeing her friends. I love when she brings her friends home. There's just something yeah. up, sweet about seeing your child like start to launch into adulthood and um, yeah. who they are. And you finally are at a stage where you're like, oh, we really can kind of be friends now because I'm not having to always worry about am I producing a functional adult, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'd love for you to talk a little bit about um, having an only child and if that was yeah. by choice. And I know, you know, I think a lot of times people will, you know, say like, oh, would, you know, did you ever want to have more? Mm -hmm. and I'd love for you to speak a little bit to that. Yeah. Um, I did not envision, like, I don't think Perry and I, my husband, um, we didn't have the conversation. Maybe we should have. We were like, hey, how many kids do you think you want to have? And we never thought about it. And so I think in my mind, I always thought we would have two. That was to me, the perfect number, because I knew I wasn't a three or four kid kind of person. Um, so in my mind, I just thought, we'll probably have two kids. And we had Caroline. Um, I'd had a really bad miscarriage before I had her. Um, and then when we had her, so I think that there was a, there were a couple of things at play. I think number one, I was so grateful to just have a healthy pregnancy, um, because I walked through some times where I really thought, I don't know that this is going to happen for me. Mm. Um, so I think there was that. And then I was working full time. And so it felt like at that point, how can we do this? Like, how can I manage a toddler and bring in a newborn in? Um, and then when she was about to start kindergarten, I really thought I wanted another one. Like, it's that scary thing of like, when you send them off to kindergarten, I mean, that feels like you're sending them off to college. You're like, well, my work here is done. Like I'm I'm all finished with the parenting, you know, like it feels, which is so stupid, but she's it's a woman now. And yes. There, she <laughs> yes. there she goes. I'm going to give her her briefcase and yes. send her out into the world. And so I was really worried about that. And I was like, I think maybe I want another one. I think I want another one. And so I started talking to Perry about it. And he was like, I don't, he was like, I don't want another one. He said, she is everything that I wanted. He said, I think we're one kid people. Um, and so I really, wanted his heart to change on that. But what happened was, is that my heart was the one that changed. And a couple of months later, I just felt really clearly that I was like, this is your family, like you're finished. Um, and in kind of that sense of like, you have, I have other things for you than more kids. And, mm -hmm. um, and that proved to be the writing and the books and the speaking and all that stuff. Um, and it's funny because 
I like the older she gets, the more I'm like, oh man, that was absolutely the right choice for us. Mm -hmm. And I think that we have so much pressure to that our family are supposed to look a certain way. Yes. Um, you know, we're supposed to have multiple kids, you know, why don't you have more kids? And, um, and there were times during that season when other friends were getting pregnant with their third or fourth, where I was like, well, like, is this, but I was like, no, this is, this is what I'm supposed to do. This is what is good for us. And so I love our little family of three and it was very intentional. Um, and I'm very, you know, people have emailed me a lot and said, but have you regretted it as she got older? Like when you were sending her off, do you wish? And I'm like, no, I really haven't because it's, um, it was the right thing for us. So you know, if I had to say anything, it's like, don't let other people determine what anything in your life should look like. Don't give into the pressure, like do what's best for you and your marriage and your husband and your life. Right. So, and like you yeah. said, it's like there was other, you know, babies coming your way in your life. Yeah. The, book, the many books that you have written and things mm -hmm. that that was not something kind of in your, on your radar at no. that time, you uh -huh. know, and it's like, you had no idea what was coming down your path. And yeah, those are things that took a lot of energy and time. Yeah. And yeah, I know you've mentioned before that every one of those books kind of felt like you were delivering like 100% a long process as far as writing and yep. process and all of that. And yeah, um, I know that's a long process for each of those. So I love that. Um, well, I wanted to talk a little bit. I know I have here, I am a full disclosure to our listeners. I am a very big Melanie Schenkel fan as a, as a reader. Um, I'd been a fan of her blogs and I have a big stack here of some of her books. And the first one she ever wrote was Sparkly Green Earrings, which I'm holding up mm -hmm. here if you're watching on our YouTube. This is about um, her mother and daughter. And I have a daughter. If you have a girl, I highly recommend. And it is so funny. The, the thing that you don't know about Melanie is that she is hilarious. And the way she can turn a phrase is, I, I just, I cackle out loud. I take pictures and send them <sighs> to my friends. Um, and then her second book was Antelope in the Living Room, which I'm holding here. And this is about marriage. And then the third one was Nobody's Cuter Than You, which was about girlfriends. And this uh -huh. one made me cry very hard. Yeah. Um, it was about all her girlfriends, but specifically about Gully, her yeah. friend, which Gully is not her real name. No, her real name is Amy. Yes. So, <laughs> Gully was her maiden name. Yes. It's just, but it stuck. Yes. Um, and then also what I, I also wanted to mention on the bright side, because this was the last book I read. I would say like the book I read right at the beginning of the pandemic, yes. like right as we were merging into mm -hmm. it. And I know that mm -hmm. wasn't like what you planned for this yeah. book. <laughs> no, really wasn't. Really <laughs> was not. Nope. But it couldn't have been better at that That's time sweet. because when everything felt very dark and scary mm -hmm. and everybody was fighting mm -hmm. and it mm -hmm. was just very, um, everyone had different opinions about everything and yeah. I am an Enneagram nine and uh -huh. I just it was a lot of noise and it was uh -huh. just uh, it was just exactly what I needed oh, at that sweet. time so love that and then my kids love I was telling Melanie I was as I was getting ready to record this I was looking for all of the books that I have and her children's book Piper and Mabel which is about her dogs I couldn't <laughs> find it and I found up in my little boy's room by his bed because he was reading it this is the funniest story too which makes me so happy Melanie has um this, uh, which one is it? Mabel that writes the Mabel writes haikus. Mabel yeah. writes haikus. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. when she, you know how Mary Catherine Gallagher, uh, best expresses herself yes. through, um, through a monologue. monologue. Yes. So, <laughs> yes. Mabel best expresses herself through a haiku. A haiku. Um, one, and so she, so there's several haikus in here yes. written by Mabel, mm -hmm. her dog. Uh, so I really enjoyed those. So um, and then also you can hear Melanie um, on a podcast that she has called The Big Boo Cast with another author named Sophie Hudson. Mm -hmm. um, the reason it's called The Big Boo Cast is because Melanie's blog um, for years is called Big Mama, mm -hmm. um, which doesn't like, doesn't encapsulate you at all, but no. it's just been you forever. Why is it called Big Mama? Would you like to share? It was called Big Mama. That was a season of life that, you know, I wouldn't have named the blog that had I known it was going to become something. It's the things you don't know. Like <laughs> this was just a whim. I'm an Enneagram 9 too. And you know, the thing about us is we really start stuff strong and then we really quit after mm -hmm. a while. So it never occurred yeah. to me I would do it for as long as I did. Right. Um, but I called it Big Mama because when I was starting the blog, Caroline was about to turn three 
And I was telling her all the time what a big girl she was because we needed to get her potty trained so she yep. could start preschool in the fall. Yep. And we needed to get rid of her pacifier because I'd been lying to the pediatrician about it for two years. And I was like, we got to do all this stuff. And so I was always, she's a big girl. And she started calling me Big Mama. So as I <laughs> sat there that night and started the blog, I was like, I just call it Big Mama. I mean, what's it matter? Who's going to read it? My dad? <laughs> You know, like, it's... and then it just sticks forever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I love that. Mm -hmm. And I love that she like, it was a term of endearment to her. Like, she's it was. a big girl, you're a big mama. I was a big mama. And she That's would be like, so come on, cute. big mama, we got to go. And it was so cute. But you don't know that to this day that every now and then I'm somewhere and somebody will be like, hey, are you big mama? And I'm like, <laughs> regretfully, yes. I am. And why is Sophie Boo Mama? I don't know that I know that. Oh, you don't know that? Um, she's Boo Mama. I? I'm sure I do. Because they lived in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, when Alex was born, when her son was born. And you know, in Louisiana, that Cajun, yeah, they don't use they don't use prepositions like they they don't or they don't use possessive. So everything right. is like that's 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 Melanie diaper. That's Melanie thing. Okay. And so their son Alex. So they would she would say like that's Boo Daddy to her uh, husband because they called him boo, boo. and Got so it. she was boo, boo mama. mama okay it's boo okay. mama okay so you know it's the it's the cajun influence okay yeah That's so fun i can just yeah. hear her i can just mm -hmm. hear her yeah boo mama. So their podcast is also very funny and they it just sound i what i love about y'all is i just feel like i'm listening to two friends talk on the phone yeah. about things um Melanie also, as I call my skincare counselor, yeah. she just tells me, I, I mean, even the pants I'm wearing right now, I don't know if you can see, these are, yeah, the, yeah. The, the, I call most things I have that I, I'm like, these are like my Melanie pants. Like, yeah. these are like, like, these are my, like, 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 I'll think these are my, this shirt, this is my, these are my Melanie pajamas. Yeah. Just there you go. Melanie tells me to buy and then mm -hmm. I buy them. You know, yeah. just, we'll just try it out and just see, mm -hmm. what, you know, is it, if it's good enough for you and Sophie, then it's yeah. good for me. <laughs> um, but so what, tell, I want to know kind of like, what is something that you are excited about right now? What is mm -hmm. something that you're looking forward to a trip, a product, uh, like tell me something oh. that you're excited about right now. That's a good question. Well, I'm excited because Caroline's coming home this weekend. So I'm <gasps> excited about that. What are y'all going to do? Got anything she, planned? Um, I think we're going to go to the ranch and go fishing one day. I think we're going to boil crawfish one day. Okay. Um, and then we'll do, it's Easter. So we'll do our Easter thing. That's right. Yes. Um, so on Sunday before she goes back to school. So that's fun. I always love having her home. Okay. Um, and then she's done. And I mean, her year is done in like three weeks after she gets back. So um, yeah, so I'm excited about that and just kind of getting to spend more time with her. Um, I'm kind of in the middle of gearing up to start a new project. So I'm working on a new book proposal right now. And so I'm, I don't okay. know if excited is the word, but I'm, um, I don't know, just focused on that and thinking okay. about that and what that all means. Um, so I think those are kind of the biggest things right now. Okay. So, um, yeah. Now I do want to ask as she is now in college, or I don't know, maybe you didn't mm -hmm. even do this when she was in high school, but when mm -hmm. she's going to come home for Easter, will you still put together an Easter basket for her? Oh, 100%. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I did it yesterday. I got, I did all the stuff. We got the Easter basket Yay. and it was funny because Gully, my best friend, she mm -hmm. has a son that's a sophomore in college and then one that's a junior. And she said, you know, what feels weird is buying a size 14 flip flop for an Easter basket, <laughs> you know, but like your babies, are, yeah. yeah, yeah. But your babies are always your babies. I'm I like, she'll She's always get an Easter, get Easter basket. Easter basket. Oh, yeah. I love that. Yeah. So. And I will mention to everyone, I'm going to put in the show notes, a link to, um, Melanie has, um, a dorm shopping list. So I know when this comes out, it'll probably be uh, late April or early May. And as you, as some of us moms are um, maybe starting to think about mm -hmm. sending some kids off to school, but there is a dorm shopping list that Melanie has from last summer when we were doing the yeah. very long ramp up to sending Carolina. Very we, long ramp We all up. sent Caroline off to school. We <laughs> all were living it. Listen, <laughs> it was a whole thing. Are we going to survive it? Is it going to be okay? I looked back the other day because a lot of people have started asking me about that <laughs> dorm list and I looked at it and it's, it's so thorough and so compulsive that I was like, bless all of my heart for that list. <laughs> like, it's just, cause you just are like, I've got to make sure that they go off to school with a box of Kleenex because if they don't, where would they buy them? Where would they get the Kleenex? <laughs> How is like, she going to handle it if she doesn't yeah, have Kleenex? What are we going to yeah, do? That's it. So. It's almost like when you, um, 
you know, when you register for your first baby, when you have like a baby, yes. I always feel like I, you know, your registry list is, you know, uh-huh. 17 pages long. And then like, yeah. I feel like the more and more children someone has, they're like, you don't need any of this. No, <laughs> no, you need diapers. Like you need diapers. It's going to be fine. Yeah, it's that's it. Be, like you don't you need can, any of that. Yeah, okay. no. I looked at that list and it was like, somebody asked me the other day, they were like, what's on that list that she didn't end up using? And I'm probably like, probably 50% of it, you know, I bet 50%. But at the time it made me feel better. It's like therapeutic shopping because yeah, I just thought if I ordered enough stuff off of Amazon, that would ensure that she was going to have a great year. And she has. Had she has had a great year. Yeah, she has had a great year. So. Well, thank you for joining us today. This has been a joy talking to you and all of the books that we listed and we're going to put the sh- the, her podcast in the show notes and everything will be there. But thank you, Melanie. We've loved having you today. Thanks, Jenny. I loved being here. All right. Bye. bye. Yay. That was Yay. awesome. So that was Mel and she's yeah. fantastic. Thank you so much, Melanie. And yes. we included in the show notes where you can find her books that we mentioned yes. and um, you can find her on Instagram at, at Melanie Shankle um, and lots of great things to find there. Yeah, so. that was awesome. Yeah. So diving into our cream and sugar this way this week, Jenny, yes. what are your cream and sugar for Houston moms? Um, well, I just, I'm so thrilled that baseball is back. Yes. And I am not like the biggest sports person, but yeah. I do love baseball and specifically Houston baseball. Mm-hmm. And we have two really great things to choose from right now. We have, of course, our beloved Astros are back in yes. town. Um, the home opener happened uh, as we're recording this. It happened last night. So mm-hmm. we're a little back in time, a little bit as you're listening <laughs> to this. Um, but uh, the home openers happened and the boys are back in town, as we would yes. like to say. So of course, Houston Astros is there. And then we also have the Sugarland Space Cowboys <laughs> is their new name, the yes. Space Cowboys. Um, and so they have a really, I have been to that stadium um, back when they were the Skeeters, but it's now mm-hmm. Space Cowboys. It is a great yeah. place to go. It is so kid-friendly. The prices are really great. They have so many awesome things to do and activities and fun stuff and fun programs and it is a great family night. Um, we yeah. really love going with our kids. So yeah. nice cowboys are there and it's, it's so fun. And yes. you can be like so up close with the player. I mean, you're like right there in the middle of it. It's a great time. So. Yeah. Oh, fun. So I want you to talk about, because you worked so hard on it for our house blend this week, which yes. our house blend is where we share something great on the Houston Mamas website. Tell us, Ashley, what have you been working so hard on? It is one of our most beloved things that all of the readers ask for every year. Tell us what have you been working on. So I have been working my tail off on an all-encompassing VBS, Vacation Bible School Guide. Um, I have tried to include everything I could. I have scoured the internet, (laughs) found all the, the information, the 411 for your children's amazing BBS experience this summer. So definitely check out that guide. I, I cover the entire map. <laughs> so is it like when we go there, is it going to be like divided by area of Houston? Yes. So you can be like, okay, I'm looking for VBS in the Cyprus area yes. or in central. Like you have it like that. Yes. So right. we have it central, north, south, southeast, southwest, like Ugh. all of it. We break it You're all an down. Angel. Okay. <laughs> nice. okay. Lots of digging. And if you know of any that I happen to miss, I doubt okay. it, but I challenge you to find one that I missed. <laughs> She's I dare like, you. Try me. You try me. <laughs> if you if you know of any that I missed, please let us know. I'd love to include it on our guide so that other moms can see uh, what's available to them too. So definitely look at it find there it's just there's so many great okay. bbs programs and different pricing you know if, if 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 you need to keep it on the super low end we we got you covered if you know if you can just go for it we've got you covered there too um okay. and it's spread out all through the summer so lots of busy things to do for your kids awesome. so yay <laughs> okay so now tell um before we wrap up do we have a see you later caffeinator do we, we do Yes. Fun fact. Um, so we, I looked this up and I was actually really excited to read about this because I thought it was just cool to think about. So the average, um, in America, the average age that a mom becomes a first time mom, at least in 2019, the average was 27. And I thought that was kind of interesting. And 
fun. And, you know, how old were you when you became a first time mom? So let's see. My daughter, Ellie, was born oh. in July and I turned 28 oh. in August the next yeah. month. So, so you um, fall into it. I was 27 <laughs> and 11 months. <laughs> so, yes. yes, I was yeah. that strikes for me. How about you? How old were you? When I you was were? actually, I was 24. <laughs> oh, did you, baby? Yeah. And then I had yes. my second at 27 and okay. my last at almost 30. So, um, but yeah, I just thought that was interesting. Just seeing those trends. I love seeing trends in motherhood. Um, so yeah, 27 mm -hmm. is the average. Let us know how old you were first time. Yes. Mom. Yeah. That was an interesting fact. I'd love to know what it was like in the fifties, oh. you know, like yeah. I'm sure that has changed very much. I'm so. sure. And I'm wondering, I'm wondering if there's a trend at all for, you know, the past couple of years, just with everything going on, if the average has changed, Ooh, uh, yeah. as of 2020, 2021 yeah, the pandemic. That's yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So all yay. right, everybody, thanks we'll for joining week. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to the cold coffee club brought to you by Houston moms. We wish you a fabulous week with your families and look forward to sharing many more cups of cold coffee with you.